<laughs> hey everybody! So Heather and I decided that we're going to try making a cooking video. We don't know how this is going to go, um, so wish us luck. But we're hoping that uh, this will help people, you know, take a try at Sri Lankan food. Maybe make it a little less intimidating. Uh, right now, we're going to be making ginger garlic chicken, which is my kids' favorite Sri Lankan dish. It is very simple. It can be made spicy or not spicy to your taste. When they first started eating it, it was entirely not spicy, and we've sort of slowly added chili powder um, as they got older and more accustomed to spice levels. Is that chipotle powder that you're adding for the chili powder? No, so um, when I say chili powder, what I mean is the kind of chili powder that you, uh, usually I would buy it in the Indian grocery store, um, and it's cayenne, but it has different levels. So there's like hot and extra hot, so when you buy cayenne in a regular American grocery store, it's generally a milder one than I find in the Indian store. So you might want to increase the amount you use if you're looking for heat. So the main spices I'm using, and as you can see over there, there's big jars of spices because we go through quite a lot, um, are garlic powder, ginger powder, cayenne, turmeric, and salt. So, um, I don't usually actually measure this. I do sort of like a big heaping teaspoon or so for about, you know, 9 to 12 chicken thighs. Um, so a heaping teaspoon of garlic powder, a heaping teaspoon of ginger powder, a tablespoon, yeah, big spoon, big spoon. But again, a little less of the turmeric because the turmeric is very strong. And then a um, big spoon of salt. So again... I don't really measure this usually. I have measurements in the cookbook, but for every day, I don't worry about it. All right, so now I'm gonna stir these together. When you mix the spices in, ideally, you would um, do it in advance, like do it maybe half an hour to an hour in advance and let the chicken marinate in the spice blend a little bit. So again, if you have time, let this sit for 30 to 60 minutes. If you don't have time, you can move right on to the frying stage. You can use vegetable oil for this. I'm gonna use ghee and, I don't know, about two tablespoons of ghee. Um, maybe a little bit more ghee. So, you're gonna drain the oil at the end, um, so don't really worry about having a little too much oil in the pan at this point. Uh, it won't hurt anything. Uh, but you, you do want the oil to be pretty hot at this point you're browning the chicken a little. You're going to sear it. Oh, but before that, if you're going to make it spicy, that's when you add the spice. So, for my kids, I'm going to say like half a spoon of chili powder, probably what they're reasonably happy to eat these days. So I add that now. The chili powder is sort of, the cayenne is raw, and so uh, it's best if you cook it a little bit, it'll, it'll get more, it'll, it has a little bit of a raw bite to it if you just add it without cooking it a bit. But you don't want to cook it for long, so you can see there are bubbles starting to form. Um, it will burn if you let it go for too long. If you're making this much chicken, you want a pretty big frying pan. Uh, if you put too much meat into, into a pan, what will happen is it'll give up so much moisture that the food will end up more steaming and it won't uh, be dry enough to sear and it won't get that nice browned caramelized flavor that makes it extra delicious. You can really just pump it up to high, stir it, and cook it till the chicken is cooked through and serve it. That'll take about five to ten minutes maybe. If you go with a slightly longer method, you end up with a nice sauce that's then going to dry and cook onto the chicken and that will, um, it's just tastier. You can actually see, I can already scrape up a little bit of the chicken that's starting to stick to the bottom, and that's great, like, that's what you want. That's where the flavor is coming from, and Heather's here, so she can smell already, I think, mm -hmm. how tasty this is going to be. I actually, I don't remember when I learned this. This is not exactly anything my mom made. It's not so different from some of the things she makes, either, but her versions are slightly, uh, slightly different. This would be great with bread, certainly, with naan, you could put it on toast. Um, traditionally with rice, 
My daughter loves salt, and I think one of the things that she likes about this dish is it's a little bit on the salty side. So at this point, it's got some nice color. It's mostly brown. You can see still a couple pieces that are that are still sort of raw, right? Um, but there's lots of brown bits. You don't need to make it super dark. Oh, and then if you, you can see on the bottom, if you pull back, some of it started to stick. That's fine. Don't worry about it because what happens next is you cover it. Okay. You can turn it down to medium. And there's now a whole bunch of liquid there. And those scrape, those dry bits on the bottom are now really easy to scrape up. So we're going to scrape those and make sure that all of that, it's called, I believe it's called the fond, F-O-M-D is what the French call it, that scraped up good meaty stuff is now going to get incorporated into the sauce. And you can see here how the oil is now starting to separate out from the sauce. So that's, that's kind of your cue that the liquid, the water has pretty much gone away. What you've got is a nice thick sauce. In about five minutes, any excess oil will have come off and this will be delicious and ready to go. So that's ginger garlic chicken. Enjoy.